Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. <sighs> Remember the other day I went to Big Lots and I went inside the DVD section where they sold a pile of DVDs that they have for three dollars, five dollars, or even twelve dollars even. Well, on the outside of town video, I did show you a clip of what I found over there during that section. So, here's the clip. Oh, and get this, one of the worst movies of all time, from Justin to Kelly. Ugh! Yeah, that's the movie. And that's the film I'm going to review today. <sighs> Such a terrible movie. Remember back in 2002, when I was watching Fox, and all three shows came on, such as That 70s Show, Grounded for Life, and Titus? I remember I saw a commercial of this stupid show called American Idol. It actually shows a fat girl singing one of the worst horrible songs I've ever heard in my entire existence. It was a Britney Spears song called Hit Me Baby One More Time. Ugh. That, that commercial just makes me want to hit my head on the screen. It was just awful. But I'll tell you this. I never once had seen an episode of American Idol in my entire life. I tried my best, and I did, however. You know, shut off you know the entire channel just for that. Because I keep seeing promos, I keep hearing the news about it, about the judges, the performers the winners, the losers, the competition, the voting system, everything. It was just too much to bear. But by the time I heard that these two hacks by the name of Kelly Clarkson and Justin Garini, you know, winning, unfortunately I ended up hearing that stupid song that Kelly Clarkson had sang called A Moment Like This. And I tell you this, man, that crappy song sounds so bland and nauseating that it just makes me want to shut off the radio completely. It was just so unnerving to hear it. Almost as unnerving as hearing a crappy Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake along with his stupid boy band in sync. Might as well call it Instinct you know, songs that they play on the radio. Yeah, it's just, it's too much. But, eventually, you know, by the time they became so popular, they wound up having a movie, just like any other. It was so horrible and painful to watch, because this movie totally rips off almost everything that I've seen before. It turns out to be more like a rip-off of all the 60s beach movies that I've already seen before, such as the Frankie Avalon, Annette Francello, or even the movie Where the Boys Are, the original by the way. So yeah, it pretty much rips off everything that's in there. Well, it's a tough movie to sit through, but here it goes. The movie stars Kelly Clarkson, Justin Garini, you have both of them from American Idol, along with Anika Noni Woes from The Princess and the Frog and Dreamgirls, Catherine Bailey's, Greg Sifts, Brian Dyson, Jason Uber, Teresa San Nicholas, Christopher Bryan, Caitlin Riley, and Mark McCauley. And it's directed by Robert Bert Icecoat. The movie begins set during spring break in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Three Texas girls, one is a singing waitress by the name of Kelly Taylor, 
played by herself, Kelly Clarkson, and all three of them meets three college guys, also known as the Pennsylvania Posse. Oh boy. She then meets one guy named Justin Bell, played by himself, Justin Bowini, and they fall in love with each other and various romantic complicated issues. Kelly's friend Kaya, played by Anika Noni Rose, falls in love with a charming busboy named Carlos. Kelly's other friend is Alexa, who schemes a way to keep Justin and Kelly from meeting each other. Meanwhile, Justin's friend Brandon is always getting on the wrong side of the sexy beach patrol woman. However, Justin's other friend, Eddie, was trying to hook up with a dream girl that he just found on the internet, sending emails for months. So basically, they just go around and hang out, meet beautiful people while they're dancing, singing, and, and lots of stuff that's been going around that just made it so complicated than it already is. And the love story is just too much to bear. So yeah, that's what the movie was all about. And frankly, it's not a good movie at all. It's a horrible, rip-off, piece of shit type of movie that I probably have seen many times before. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, Kelly Clarkson and Justin Garini have no chemistry whatsoever. And the sad part about this piece of crap is that the only good thing about the movie, other than the fact that the cast themselves are bad, is Anika Noni Rose from the movie The Princess and the Frog, as well as Dreamgirls. I gotta say, she was the only good actress on the planet that I can deal with. At least she has a better career, but that's what happens. And I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of Kelly Clarkson or Justin Garini because, frankly, I don't give a crap about Kelly Clarkson's songs or her music ability because frankly I think I've heard this before many times already. Okay, we already deal with Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. I definitely do not need another one. Okay. And she sounds a little bit like um, Pink, by the way. You know, Alicia Moore, for the most part. You know, all, all the songs are basically the same, it's just with difference. You know, I know she tried to make some comeback, you know, as years followed, but what's the point? She's still the same as she's always been since she won from American Idol. In fact, there have been better singers out there. I know that Carrie Underwood won. I didn't know she was from that stupid show, but nevertheless, at least she's more talented than she is. And Jennifer Hudson's okay, too. I'm not a big fan of her either, but I do think she is talented, too. You know, I feel sorry about her family, that she lost to this very depressing. This movie was just stupid, ridiculous, the songs are not memorable at all, they're just forgettable and very bland as well. Um, even worse, they even sing the horrible cover of a KC Sunshine Band song, That's the Way I Like It. Yeah, it was horrible. And I noticed that there were two versions of this same movie. One only lasted uh, 81 minutes, the other one 90 minutes. And to my surprise, I only saw the extended cut. Oh, in fact, I actually saw both of them um, on Netflix. And I wasted two hours of my entire life, almost two hours, and it was just two hours of my life that I'll never get back. But this movie was enough for me to punch a hole on the screen because I just couldn't handle this movie any longer. It was just... It was a total insult, it was a disgrace, and I had to say, I'm a bit surprised this piece of crap, you know, flopped at the box office, it didn't do so well, and it looked to me like this movie came out within a week, yeah, and it felt like it was a week when I heard about this, and I'll tell you this, this movie it was even worse than any other movie I've seen in my entire life. And it wasn't very pleasant to sit through. And trust me, it's even worse than listening to a Britney Spears or Justin Timberlake song. Or even worse, having to see a movie with Justin Timberlake. 
or even Britney Spears for that matter. Yeah, it's just, this is just too much. Yeah, so there you have it for Justin the Kelly. It's no wonder it's one of the worst musicals in the last 25 years, not to mention the worst movie of 2003, which made it up for Geely, The Cat in the Hat, and many others. In fact, even The Room is better than this. Yeah, at least that one had more humor compared to this. This movie is not even funny at all. I didn't even laugh once. You know, it was just nauseating to sit. Okay, I know it's been going on for so long, but let's face it, this movie just totally stinks from beginning to end. At least they all move on to something. Kelly Clarkson's still doing her stupid music. Meanwhile, Justin Guarini is just move on to do two Broadway shows and suffers from depression and many others are just, you know, went on to do some bigger and better things. But nevertheless, it's been 10 years since this piece of crap came out and it's still the worst movie ever. So, anyway, I give from Justin to Kelly zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.